What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a Full Art Brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. I apologize we didn't actually get a video up on Friday. Uh, 100% uh, I lost track of time and just forgot to record one. So my bad guys, but we are back and today we're opening a pack of legions. Not a pack that we get to open very often, so I'm actually pretty stoked about this. I do not know uh, what the good cards are in this set at all. Uh, I know there's a number of like tribal synergies and things like that, so we'll definitely see what's in here, uh, and we will go through this as if we are drafting this set, so we'll do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick would be, but our first card here is Mace Tail Heistradon. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four for 6 and a red. It does have first strike and haste, and you can cycle it for 3 of any color, so uh, you pay 3, discard it from your hand, and then you're able to draw a card. Uh, that cycling is really, really key because it adds a huge amount of flexibility to a card, uh, especially something like this, which is huge late game kind of threat. Uh, but in the early turns, you may be looking for a removal spell. You may be looking for something to deal with the opponent's board. If you're looking for something like that, just cycle this away and dig a little bit deeper into your deck. It's really good for that kind of thing. Uh, I don't love this card though, actually. Uh, it's fine for the cycling. It's not very good for seven mana. It's really bad for seven mana. In fact, uh, the fact that it gives haste and first strike to a four four, that's great. Haste and first strike, very, very good mechanics, but on a four four on turn seven, that's pretty late. Uh, and so it's really not doing that much. Unfortunately, it's just going to get outpowered. Not a super exciting first pick by any means. Uh, Hunter Sliver uh, is a 1-1 for 1 and a red. All Slivers have Provoke. If you don't know what the Slivers do, uh, they essentially boost all other Slivers on the field. Uh, it's a really, really powerful uh, kind of synergistic deck if you can make it work. Uh, but in draft, it tends to be a little bit harder, uh, and you really want to find those big payoff slivers. But that being said, provoke, uh, if you don't know what that means, when a sliver attacks, its controller may have target creature the defending player controls untap and block it if able. So essentially, you get to choose how things are blocking and everything like that. Really, really cool mechanic. Uh, I, honestly, slivers, it's a really hit or miss thing, like I said. I don't like banking on them unless I know I'm getting something really, really good off the bat. Uh, Hunter Sliver, while perfectly fine, is not a reason to be in Slivers by any means. There's a few more powerful ver or powerful Slivers that you would want first. Uh, and so, uh, for me, this is not necessarily a first pick. It's something that if I end up in that deck, absolutely take it. But uh, in, in this case, it's not a first pick. Uh, Echo Tracer is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. Uh, you can morph it for 2 and a blue. So you can play this face down as a 2-2 creature for 3 of any color. Uh, and then turn it up at any time for its morph cost, that being the two and a blue. Uh, when it's turn face up, return target creature to its owner's hand. That is a very, very good ability. So uh, what's cool about this is you don't your opponent's not going to know what it is. Uh, you play it face down uh, is definitely the way you want to play this. And then you flip it face up, return something to their to their hand, and set them back a turn. That's exactly how you want to do this. It's a fantastic tempo play. Uh, definitely the most lucrative card we've seen so far, so that's definitely the one that I'm going to say is our first pick right now. But uh, any kind of tempo play, it's a very blue kind of style of playing, but uh, it works really, really well. It's just you set your opponent back a couple turns, uh, and incrementally you gain that advantage, and that's exactly what you want to do in blue. Uh... What the heck? Oh, Jim Palm Avenger. Could not read that. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's a 3-5 five for 5 and a white. Uh, it also has cycling for 2 and a white. So same thing. You can play, pay that, discard it, and then draw a card. Uh, when you cycle it, all soldiers get plus 1, plus 1, and gain first strike until end of turn. Uh, again, we're seeing that tribal synergy. Uh, as a threat on its own, this is only a 3-5 for 6. That's pretty bad. Uh, very, very underpowered. Not worth it at all. Uh, cycling this is actually pretty good, though, if you're in that soldier's deck. Uh, now, what I would say is, again, just like the sliver, this isn't necessarily a reason to be in the soldier's deck. It's a very good card for it, but if you happen to find yourself low on picks for that deck, it tends to be a really bad card. And so, what I would say is, definitely, if you're in the soldier deck, you would want to pick this up. However, 
If you're not already established in that deck, I wouldn't pick this up first. I just don't think it's powerful enough to say, yes, this is why I want to be in that deck. And that really is what you're kind of having to ask yourself, and I just don't think it's there. Uh, Gem Palm Polluter uh, is a 4-3 for 5 and a black. You can cycle it for 2 black, and then when you cycle it, you may have target player lose 1 life for each zombie in play, again, boosting that tribal synergy. Uh, really, really good for the zombies deck, but again, I don't know if it's a reason to be in zombies. It might actually be. It might be a pretty powerful one. 100% uh, for that cycling ability, though. Again, it's a 4-3 for 6. That's low on the power, uh, power to casting cost ratio. Uh, now, this is an older set, something I should mention. It is a bit of an older set. The creatures tend to be a little bit underpowered, but there are certainly better options for first picking than this, in my opinion. Uh, Cephalid Pathmage uh, is 2 and a blue for a 1-2. It is unblockable, and then you can tap it and sacrifice it. Target creature is unblockable this turn, so you can actually give that unblockable to another creature. Uh, unblockable tends to be very uh, good in draft, especially if you can draft some like enchant creatures to stick on the unblockable uh, creature. That just means that they're going to be getting in for quite a lot of damage. Uh, what's cool about this is you can tap it and give that unblockable to something else. Now, obviously, it's a one-shot deal. You do have to sacrifice this, which kind of sucks. But if you get a really good bomb out and you really just need to finish off the opponent, tap it, give it unblockable, and then you're good to go. So it's actually pretty good for that. Uh, I will say... It is in blue, and blue tends to be the, the color with not necessarily the most bu buffed up powerful creatures, but uh, it is still quite good in my opinion. I, I do like the Echo Tracer better uh, still, but Unblockable is pretty powerful in draft. It just means that you're going to be able to deal damage every single turn, and that's exactly what you need to be doing, so it's perfect for it. Uh, Timber Watch Elf is a 1-2 for 2 and a green. Uh, you can tap it and target creature gets plus X plus X until the end of the turn where X is the number of elves in play. So elves are actually a really, really powerful deck, especially in Constructed. We see this card in particular and things like Legacy Elves and stuff like that because it's just such a big boost. You can really turbo out a lot of them. Uh, in Limited, I think they're perfectly fine as well. I just don't know how often you can pull off uh, a really, really solid Elves deck. I feel like it's a little bit like Slivers. Uh, you're a little bit dependent on what you open up in the pack, of course. That tends to be the case with any Tribal Synergy, but uh, this is a very, very good payoff for that deck. It just boosts the creatures up. It makes any creature a threat, uh, as long as you can keep enough of them on the field. So that's kind of the trick there. I think on its own, the Echo Tracer is a little bit of a better card. If you're in that Elf deck, though, this is a really, really good card for sure. Uh, Vile Deacon is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and 2 black. When it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until the end of the turn, where X is the number of clerics in place. So again, we're seeing a lot of that tribal synergy out of this pack. Uh, and this is a really, really good uh, beater for the cleric deck. If you can get, I believe it's like a white-black cleric deck. I might be wrong on that. Uh, but if you can get a lot of them, this is another really, really good payoff, similar to the Timberwatch Elf, uh, in that you're really, really getting a strong threat every single uh, attack phase, and that's really, really good. Uh, I think I would actually prefer the Timberwatch Elf over this, to be honest, uh, just because you can give that ability to anybody at instant speed, and that's a little bit more powerful, in my opinion, than only being able to do it on a singular card. Uh, and so I would lean towards the Timberwatch Elf if I was between these two cards. Still, I would go for the Echo Tracer, uh, just a solid card on its own uh, and I think that makes it a better first pick it leaves you a little more open uh, Goblin Firebug is a 2-2 for 1 and a red. Uh, when it leaves play, you sacrifice a land. This is just a bear with downside, uh, unfortunately. Goblins tend to be very, very aggro, very, very aggressive, and that's great. Uh, if you can get a lot of the payoffs, fantastic for sure. This is not one of them. This is very much a filler 2-drop card. It's perfectly fine because, honestly, in a Goblins deck, you really don't need too many lands anyway, but... Uh, it's really not ideal. You don't want to be sacrificing lands, obviously. That just seems bad. So it's a bear with some downside. If you're in the Goblins deck, you might pick it up very, very late in the pack just because you need that two drop. But there's really not a huge draw for a card like this. Uh, Avon Redeemer is a 2-2 for 3 and a white. It has flying and you can tap it uh, to prevent the next two damage that will be dealt to target creature or player this turn. I don't love this card. Uh, any kind of like prevent damage effects, I, sh I tend to shy away from a little bit. They're just not my favorite. They, they do work. I mean, they save you through the game a good bit. However, 
uh, it's very easy to just remove this creature and it doesn't actually do that much. So it's not my favorite thing. It is a flyer. That's nice. It's evasive. Uh, it's a bird and a cleric, which is actually kind of nice. It has synergies with both. Uh, cleric is obviously going to be what you really go for, I would assume, but um, it is flying. It's evasive. I like it for that reason. I still think the ability on the Echo Tracer is just so much better uh, that I would go for that versus this card, though. That's just, again, my personal play style, but that's how I would view it. Uh, Void Mage Apprentice is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has Morph, so you can play it face down for 3 and then flip it face up for 2 and 2 blue at any time. And when it's turned face up, you counter target spells. So this and the Echo Tracer are a little bit similar uh, in that they would go in the same style of deck. Uh, obviously, a tempo kind of counter spell uh, focused deck is going to be what these are perfect for. Uh, it just it just kind of sets your opponent back hugely. Uh, if you can bounce something, counter a spell, do whatever you need to do, it's going to prevent them from uh, from pursuing their own game plan, which is going to hopefully put you in the lead long term. Uh, and that's really what Blue's trying to do anyway. And uh, these do fall in the Wizards theme as well, uh, I should mention. But honestly, I don't know which is better here. Uh, I'm going to keep them together because I actually really like both of these cards. Uh, the, the Echo Tracer is a little bit easier to pull off, I would say. Uh, and because creatures tend to be the focus in draft, that's more kind of my thing is I would rather be able to bounce a creature. However, straight up countering anything is actually really, really good too. So obviously I don't know which is best, but I am going to keep them together for now and we'll decide uh, if, we, if we don't get something a little more powerful later in the pack. Uh, our first uncommon is uh, fren Frenetic Raptor. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it's a 6-6 six, six for 5 and a, and a red, and it just says Beast Can't Block. Uh, so this is a beast. It does fall under that Beast Tribal category, uh, but it's a really, really good beater. It's just going to swing in for 6 a lot. Uh, it's on curve, which is great in terms of its stats. Obviously, the Beast Can't Block is a pretty big downside. Uh, however... In, a, in that style deck, you're probably not looking to block very often anyway. Uh, this very much feels like a bit of a win more card, uh, but it is very, very good top end for that kind of deck. I'm going to keep it with the other two for now, and we'll kind of decide again as we get closer to the end of the pack. But I actually really like this card. The fact that the beast can't block is a bit of a setback, but I don't think it's big enough that I, I think this card is bad. Uh, Swooping Talon is 4 and 2 white for a 2-6 with flying. Uh, you can pay 1 and it loses flying until the end of the turn, and then you can also uh, give it Provoke. So what's cool, uh, You the reason you have the ability to, to get rid of the flying on this card is so you can actually provoke something that does not have flying into blocking this. However, I actually think this card's very bad because it is only a 2-6. Uh, it's really not going to deal with a whole lot except for some maybe low ground, very, very uh, early game threats. And this is a 6-drop, so it's going to be pretty late game when you play this. I don't love it. I think it's quite bad. It's a bit of a mana investment as well if you want to start dealing with a lot of the board. Uh, and I just don't like that. Maybe if you can stack on some enchant creatures, it gets better. But again, just not my favorite. Uh, Dark Supplicant is our last uncommon. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Tap it, sacrifice 3 clerics, search your graveyard, hand, and or library for a card named Scion of Darkness, put it into play, and then you shuffle your library uh, if you searched it. So, really interesting card. I don't like these because they're build-around cards, and it's really hard to build around anything in draft. Uh, if you happen to get uh, Scion of Darkness, I think at that point you would want to pick this up, but I don't think you want to do it in reverse order. If you don't have it, this is literally just a 1-1 one, one for 1, which is quite bad. It is a cleric, so there's some synergy there, but in general, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I'd much rather have the Scion of Darkness and then maybe pick up this than the other way around. Uh, and then our rare here is Hollow Spectre. So it's a 2-2 for 1 and 2 black. It does have flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can pay X. And then if you do, that player reveals X cards from his or her hand. You choose one of them, and that player discards that card. Well, this is definitely great. Uh, so what's cool about this is it's an evasive threat. It's very aggressively costed for a set like this. 2-2 uh, two, two for 3 with flying. 
pretty solid, very on point. Uh, and then being able to hopefully discard some cards from the opponent's hand if this sticks around long enough is really, really good. You're going to be able to get a lot of value off of this. Discard one or two cards and you've already gained a lot of tempo. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Not only that, it's probably fairly easy to get in for a lot of damage because of that flying, which is really, really good. Just all of the great things with this card. I think this is definitely the best one. Uh, for, hands down, that's the pick, in my opinion. There were a couple of other good cards, but I do think that's definitely the best. So if you disagree, please let me know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome contents. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.